Southwest PGA members, Brian Schulte here with Spooner. Uh, wanted to go over some of the exercises and concepts we talked about at our seminar that we held at the Spooner Sports Institute. I'm gonna go through some of the exercises we showed you, uh, but on top of it, give you a little bit of the why behind the what. So one of the core concepts we talked about is the three planes of motion that the human body moves front to back, side to side, and rotationally, and especially in golf, not only within your posture, but within the dynamic motions of the golf swing. So I'm gonna go through the exercises. Uh, the first one is called 3D Maps. 3D Maps was created by a place called the Great Institute. We wanna make sure we give them credit where credit is due. And it's a series of movements that allows the body to go through all those motions of the three planes. So that means we're gonna be going forward, backwards, left and right, rotating in both directions as well. Uh, this can be done with a golf club in your hands. You can do this with just your hands. If uh, you or one of your students is someone that maybe needs a little bit more balance help, holding on to maybe a golf cart or even a club can be beneficial for you as well. So I'm gonna be using my right leg and I'm gonna be kind of talking off my right leg. If you wanna do this along with me, you're welcome to use your left foot and kind of mirror along beside me. Uh, but I'm gonna have both hands on the club. My right foot is gonna take a step forward. My arms are gonna go all the way up and back. So it's gonna look like this. I'll do a few reps facing forward and then I'll go sideways. So you can see what that looks like sideways as well. You can do really as many reps as you want, uh, maybe around 10 to 20 to make sure that it feels comfortable and you're getting a good stretch out of this motion. And of course, whatever we do on the right side, we would do on the left side as well. Now, if you're working with someone that is maybe a little challenged with coordination, you can chunk out those movements by doing one and then the other. What I mean by that is you can instruct someone and say, okay, uh, let's just work on that step first. Once they master that step, just have them go feet together, arms going all the way up and back. And then once they feel comfortable with that, you can put the two together and hopefully they can sequence that movement appropriately. If we do something forward, of course, we can do something backwards. So I'm gonna take my right foot, take a small step back now. As I take that small step back, I'm gonna take my hands all the way down to the ground and back up. I'll do that a few times. Face this way for you as well. So you can see in that first one, we move the pelvis forward. This one emphasizes the pelvis going backwards. Got to go side to side now. So I'm going to take my right foot, take my right foot to the side. If my pelvis is going to the right, I want my pelvis to continue going more to the right. So I'm going to take my hands and go all the way up and to the left to help the pelvis get there. So hands are going to start up. My right foot's going to go to the right. Arms go all the way up and to the left. And of course, we would do that on the other side by taking the left foot over to the left, the arms up and to the right. If my right foot can go to the right, my right foot can also go to the left. So I'm gonna cross this over. My pelvis is now sliding to the left. My pelvis is sliding to the left. I want my hands to go up and to the right to help my pelvis get there. And again, 10, 15, 20 reps, whatever feels pretty good for you. And same thing on the other side there. And that takes care of our front to uh, side to side movement. You can see that my spine tilts side to side as I do that, just like I would in the golf swing. Finally, we've got the rotational plane, the transverse plane. For this, my left foot is gonna be forward at you. I like to use a clock analogy, and I like to think that if my left foot is forward at noon, I'm gonna want my right foot to rotate this way towards my golf bag, which I would say is about five o'clock on a clock going back to an old analog clock. My pelvis is rotating to the right, which means that my hands are gonna help me do that. So hands are gonna be out at shoulder height, rotate to the right and come back. You can tell this looks remarkably similar to a golf swing. Pelvis, torso, rotating in the same direction. And of course, if I want to make this a little bit more golf-like, we know we don't play golf on this horizontal plane. We've got to play on the tilted axis so I can rotate and tilt if I want to do it this way. And same thing with the left side. This would be about seven o'clock on the clock. Going back to my analogy, you can go on the tilted axis or you can keep it here. 
Finally, if the pelvis can turn to the right with my right foot going to the right, we can also go to the left. My left foot's gonna be at noon. My right foot is gonna rotate around. Now this would be the equivalent of nine o'clock from my perspective. Pelvis is rotating to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my hands rotate to the left. Help me rotate into that lead hip for me as a right-handed golfer. And then obviously the other side, right foot forward, left foot rotating to the right, hands rotating to the right as well. So quick review, we did forwards, we did backwards, we did right, we did left, we rotated right, we rotated left. The other addition to that that we talked about from a stability standpoint is having people pre-position their feet. So again, if you have someone that's a little bit balance challenged or coordinated or uncoordinated with the movements, instead of having them actively step, we can have them in this nice wide staggered stance, right legs in front, left legs behind, nice and wide. And I can run through the motions with my hands, down, up, right and left, rotate and rotate. And again with the left side, down, up, right, left, rotate and rotate. The final move that we discussed in our seminar we tend to call it type one spinal motion, which describes rotation of the spine in one direction with side bend to the other, which again is the golf swing. So how we did this, and I'm gonna use my golf club to do this, but like I said, you can use a wall, you can use the pillar of a golf cart if you'd like. I'm gonna think about my backswing motion, and my body's gonna be going this way, so I'm gonna take my left hand and plant it to the outside of my right shoe. From here, I've got that right rotation. Now I need that left side bend. So with that right side or that left side bend, I'm gonna take my right hand and I'm gonna drive it up and over to help my shoulders tilt towards the golf ball like this. This is our type one stretch that we went over. The additional modification we added to it is if we wanna rotate into that hip a little bit more, we take that left foot, creep it around, and now I'm really rotated into that right hip as I get into that left side bend, right rotation of my spine. And of course, if the backswing is this way and I'm mimicking it, then my follow through going this way would mean that my right hand is right here on the golf club outside of my left foot. This is my left rotation. Now I need the right side bend. I'm gonna take my hand up and over here. And again, I can take that foot, creep it around, plant the club, left hand up and over to help my spine with that tilt, that rotation, along with some hip mobility as well. So those are some exercises that you can use with your students, use with yourself, maybe before a round, maybe after the round, quick, simple, easy things that you can do on the range or at home. If there's anything else that we can do to help you guys out, feel free to reach, us, uh, reach out, let us know, happy to help. Hit them straight, good luck.